So this is from BBC News. Clarence Abend, music industry legend known as the Black Godfather, dies age 92. Clarence Abend, whose talent as a manager, mentor, and deal maker earned him the nickname the Godfather of Black Music, has died age 92. A former head of Motown, he worked with everyone from Bill Withers to Michael Jackson and founded one of America's first black owned radio stations. Avant died at home in Los Angeles on Sunday, his family said in a statement. It comes 20 months after his wife Jacqueline was shot and killed by an intruder in their Beverly Hills home. Clarence leaves behind a loving family and a sea of friends and associates that have changed the world and will continue to change the world for generations to come, said the family. The joy of his legacy eases the sorrow of our loss. Avant's list of accomplishments was long and varied. A former nightclub manager, his reputation as a tough negotiator attracted the attention of soul singer Lil Willie John, who asked him to become his manager. That had brought him to the attention of in- entertainment industry veteran Joe Glazier, who managed the likes of Louis Armstrong and Barbara Streisand. Glazier took Avant under his wing, handling, handing him some clients, including Mission Impossible composer Lalo Schifrin, encouraging him and how to close deals. Joe Glazier taught me to aim high, he told Variety Magazine in 2016. You can't walk up the Empire State Building, you'll get tired. Your knees might give out, but you can ride the elevator and walk down. You always aim up here and walk down later if you have to. Before long, he negotiated a six-figure deal for jazz producer Creed Taylor at A&M Records, despite the fact that he was already contracted to another label. Avant went on to marry Sarah Vaughan, Freddie Hubbard, and Kim Weston, who duetted with Marvin Gaye on It Takes Two. He also founded two record labels, Sussex and Taboo, and used the former to launch the career of Bill Withers. A former aircraft mechanic, Withers had been rejected by virtually every other record company in America. But Avon heard something in his laid-back, ruminative style and steered songs like Ain't No Sunshine and Lean On Me to Global Success. So he was the one who sang that song. Oh, I never knew. The executive also discovered and signed Sugar Man singer Sixto Rodriguez, whose records flopped in the 1970s but became cult classics before his rediscovery through the Oscar-winning documentary Search for Sugar Man in 2012. In the 1980s, Taboo Records scored hits with the SOS band Cheryl and Alexander O'Neill while launching the careers of Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis as a songwriting team. They will go on to score 16 U.S. number one singles, including Usher's You Remind Me, George Michael's Monkey and Janet Jackson's tracks together again, and that's the way love goes. In 1989, Avant also represented songwriters L.A. Reid and Babyface as they launched L. La Face Records, a joint vest with Arista Records that set stars like Tony Baxter, TLC, Outkast, and Pink on the road to fame. He was also the promoter of Michael Jackson's Bad Tour in 1987, which earned 125 million, 99 million, or pounds, wait, 125 million dollars, 99 million pounds, 336 million, 266 million, 20, 23 figures worldwide. Avant was named Motown chairman in 1993, overseeing a period of success for artists including Boyz II Men, Johnny Gill, and Shanice. Among his more colorful escapades, he sabotaged a TV program that was planned as a rival Soul Train, brokered peace amongst warring rights holders for an E.T. tie-in album, and arranged safe passage for P. Diddy in the aftermath of the notorious Biggs murder. Outside of music, he helped American football player Jim Brown develop a career in acting and advised several U.S. presidents, including Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. The guy's a rock in every way, Clinton once commented. His advice per word is worth more than anyone I've ever dealt with. Even so, many people found it hard to pinpoint exactly what Avant did. What he's done is a very unusual story, said Bill Withers. He puts people together and they do what they do. How do you put together a life from knowing people. He preferred to remain behind the scenes, remaining humble and hardworking despite his many accolades, including being inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2021. Clarence is our deal-making renaissance man, our pope, our rebel, our consigliere. Epic Records CEO Silvio Rohn told Billboard in 2006 he's been a great mentor, creating a world of opportunity for others to follow. Everyone in this business has been by Clarence's desk if they're smart, added his lifelong friend Quincy Jones. He gets things done but doesn't beat his chest or look for credit. The executive lost his wife in tragic circumstances two years ago. Avant decided by his daughter Nicole Avant, a former U.S. ambassador to the Bahamas and wife of Netflix chief 
counting officer Ted Sarandos, and his son Alexander. His wife Jacqueline was a prominent philanthropist and had, who had dedicated her life to helping low-income neighborhoods. She was killed in December 2021 by a man who had broken into family home. The intruder, Ariel Maynor, pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and was sentenced to 190 years life in prison. Tributes to Clarence poured in after news of his death was confirmed on Monday. Bill and Hillary Clinton, the former U.S. President and Secretary of State, said in a joint statement, they were saddened by the passing of our friend. It was impossible to spend time with him and not come away feeling more positive and wanting to follow his example. Jay-Z's company, Rock Nation, added Clarence Avant isn't just the godfather of music, he is our cultural godfather. Throughout his life, he burst through doors and tore down ceilings, changing lives and providing opportunities for generations. A true pioneer, a mentor and a champion, Clarence Avant is and always will be a giant among us. Well, we would like to pay tribute to his massive achievements. So please comment, rate, share and subscribe. Peace.